Good afternoon, everyone. Only one of the two new images after 24 hours that I've found of ash circulating in the Southern Hemisphere. You'd think the International Space Station would have thousands of images by now. A look at stratified ash layering in the atmosphere and how that is gonna spread along the same latitude belts until it gets swept up to the equator. Sulfur dioxide continues to travel west off of Australia over to Africa. Wind patterns show the same off a null school. The center column may be revised upward to 65 kilometers. And the middle range projections are putting at least half a degree Celsius cooling over the next year. These areas here are gonna have decreased crop yields. And in part one of the video talking about Southern Hemisphere reductions, Australia and the African continent, South America, Argentina is gonna be greatly hampered by this with so many of their crops in mid-season growth being affected. Brazil, not so much, but looking at the corn exports, wheat exports, who relies on that most? China. Looks like Joe hasn't gotten the virus or the economy under control. And now we have inflation and cron cases skyrocketing. And do you think the stock market will trade higher in the next three years than it did from 2016 to 2020? Economists are comparing our current inflationary environment to the inflation era of the 1970s. Gold was up 20x, silver 37x in that 10-year period. Learn how simple it is to add physical gold and silver to your portfolio ahead of the rise in inflation and predicted price rises. Patriot Gold Group has the no fee for life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver. Call 1-800-356-4470 and get a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And some beautiful sunlight passing through the ash, continuing to spread across the Southern Hemisphere. Now in 24 hours with one of the largest eruptions in the last 30 years, you'd think there'd be far more images out there, especially with the International Space Station circling around the planet every few hours over these same areas where the ash is spreading. The trajectory west off of Australia. But after 24 hours, I found two new releases from NASA. It's always the same images just recirculating again and again. Two new images. The best tech we have, the best visual imagery, satellites, and real-time camera views, and this is all we get, four images stacked. The bottom layering was from yesterday. What is going on? Why are there not so many images? I could put out some of my own ideas, especially when you start to look at this stratified ash layer modeling that they're doing now. Notice the black dashes there on the glass and mimicking the eruption where is the bulk of the ash going to stay and spread? And in turn, what type of acid rain is that going to drop on the crops? What type of sunlight is that going to block out in our main crop growing areas? And how much do you think it's going to decrease the yield moving in? And then those nations reliant on importing food from the same areas, decreased yields. Some nations are not going to get the full allotments this year. That is for sure. And looking at Null School here, you can follow the winds right from Australia over to Africa. And we'll see how it transits after it passes Southern Africa. But it will head over into South America, Brazil, Argentina over the next seven days. Now one thing to think about this with atmospheric wind circulation, that center lighter blue line is the equator. And if you go up toward France on that map, That'll take you to 30 degrees north latitude. And if you go south to where it says southeast trade winds down to that blue line terminating at the Farrell and Hadley cells on the right, that'll take us down to 30 degrees south latitude. But notice where the winds are pushing. The eruption was at 20 degrees south latitude. 
So much of the ash is going to be directed toward the equatorial bands. The feral cell is going to sweep a little bit up and pull it more south. This might give you a little bit better imagery here on how the winds are going to sweep this ash and sulfur dioxide into different areas across the planet as this unfolds over the next months, plural, and I do mean two, four, six, ten months in the future. A lot of it's going to get stuck in that 30 degrees south latitude up to the equator, and it looks like it absolutely is going to surpass and go over the equator into the northern hemisphere. Westerlies are going to pull it back and take it even further south. Not so much crop production from 30 to say 60 degrees south latitude. So most of the reductions are going to occur between the equator at zero and 30 degrees south latitude. And speaking of atmospheric disturbances, let's talk about gravity waves. Visible, how the atmosphere was moved and not being widely talked about either are the perturbations from this event as well that will ripple around and continue to have some sort of effect on the atmosphere circulation patterns. That was a very large disturbance in the atmosphere. Now, how long will it take to play out and everything restabilize again? This is brand new research. Hence the beginning of the video. Why are there not more images coming out with this massive event when we have all the tech to give us such images and the umbrella is going to continue to spread like they did with the modeling and the pink plumes in the water column to mimic that plume top 55 kilometers. That is through several other reports I'm reading, maybe going to be revised up to 60 to 65 kilometers. So we're looking at the upper umbrella through the bottom layering where it would maybe terminate at the lower plume that is going to continue to spread. Incredible imagery here, looking at that center column poking through the umbrella of ash. And now so many estimates are coming out. The minimum range that we're looking at for cooling is half a degree Celsius. I'm willing to go on the record to say that. Others are going to put it down at one degree Celsius cooling. Be prepared for half a degree Celsius cooling globally. A lot of the effects are going to be right in this band that I put on the blue map here. 20 south is where the eruption took place and we're going to have that mixing as you saw in the atmospheric circulation and over time this is going to get drawn toward the equator but for these very first few weeks and months a lot of the ash sulfur dioxide is going to thin itself through this area of the box on the map so i have to look which countries are there and which ones produce food for our planet and off centennial here Sulfur dioxide, as we saw at the eruption several days ago, moving through Australia, crossing Australia, passing over into Indian Ocean and on its way to Africa. If you want to find any of these images, just head over to Twitter specifically and put in some of these hashtags, Centennial5P, Tropomi, and you should come up with a bevy of different information and graphics. So what they know so far is this sulfur dioxide plume from Australia and not even at the origination point at Tonga, which is some thousands of miles even further. So far it's 7,000 kilometers long heading from Australia, just starting to touch into Africa. Those of you in the States multiply everything by 0.6 to get the miles, 4,200 miles. And you can find this one over in the Copernicus database. This one will show you the total mass of area covered from the eruption so far as this continues to spread and it looks like 698,000 square kilometers so far is the area covered but this will continue to spread and that'll go well into the multi-millions of square kilometers of coverage that's what I'm saying that these areas that I've marked in red on this map here are going to be the ones that encounter some of the greatest yield reductions in the southern hemisphere so I did cover Africa and Australia yesterday in part one of the video series. I encourage you to watch that. I'm going to jump over here to Brazil and South America to see who are the countries that rely on South American exports for their foodstuffs. Brazil, massive exporter, Asia, China. The harvest and planting season is predominantly in these next two months. So the effect is not going to be as great as areas that are in full mid-season and the plants are maturing. Now the planting dates in the first emergence, that will have a little effect, 
but not as if it's in mid-season when the plants will be struggling when they need nutrients, sunlight, and these inputs at the most critical time. And we're just unsure how precipitation patterns are going to move with all this sulfur dioxide, acid rain, different ash, and what that will affect with rainfall patterns. And speaking of rainfall, the Brazilian soybean crop forecast lowered a little bit because of the drought. Now, will this ash bring more rainfall? What we have to look to in the past is more of a Pinatubo style, but for the Southern Hemisphere. And looking at the oil, seed, and soybean exports, Brazil obviously in the number one there, but Argentina, number two. Which brings us to Argentina, and this will be the country with the greatest declines in yield across the board. Everything is in the mid-season at the moment. Everything being grown is going to be reduced because of the lack of available sunlight and all those stresses on the plants right now when they're coming into maturation just before the harvest season. And then in addition to that, some of the wildfires, and you can see the map top right, that is already particulates that are up there blocking sunlight. Now we're going to add another full layer, and I'm not even talking about the geoengineering strictly ash sulfur dioxide combining with this particulate from the fires and also our friends at higher altitudes and airplanes from harvard oxford nasa and private organizations worried about earth's temperatures too major exporters of corn who do i see there argentina who relies on that china also factoid here sorghum exports China reliant on Australia and Argentina, both going to have reductions in yield due to this event of the eruption in Tonga. Moving over to Chile, also far south. Since it's already coming into the harvest season, except for rice, everything's going to be right on track there. I don't foresee much happening in Chile. So it'll all be down to the corn exports, which on the map, Brazil, Argentina, major players that are going to have some reduction as well as the wheat a lot of that's outbound for china so as this ash continues to push further toward the equator got uruguay and paraguay these are kind of wild cards not sure how fast this is going to have an effect due to the southeast trade winds pushed by the subtropical high but with the fertilizer shortage herbicide shortage supply chain breakdown and now this ash across the southern hemisphere reducing yields things are going to get a little expensive on the food side you might want to prepare a little bit and i will combine this with part one to do a, a full length video here so you can watch it all in one go but if you're thinking about storable foods three month emergency food supply my patriot supply and adapt 2030 it's a great way to support the channel that links in the description box below along with the links to all of tonight's images stories feeds so you can do more research on your own. I appreciate you watching. Hope you got something out of the video and I'll see you next time.